So this is our first uh, machine example problem. And our goal in this problem is to find the compressive force that is being applied on this eyelid. And we can actually ignore this small spring here. So just ignore it or don't draw it in your diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is actually uh, draw the free body diagram of this machine. And what that implies is that we're going to break this machine into various parts and use a Newton's third law when applying the forces on these various uh, free body diagrams. So uh, what we're going to do is actually draw the parts. So I'm going to draw the parts first and then I'll apply the, uh, free uh, the forces on the diagram. So I exploded the parts of this, uh, this diagram right here and now we're going to apply the forces on it. So let's start off with the given. So there's a force P being applied vertically downward. So we're going to define um, this as going downward. So this is going to be P. And then at the same location, this is going to be P as well. So this is going to be P. And then uh, this is actually a two force member. So what we can do is actually draw the reaction forces going in this direction. So we could say it's being this way. It doesn't matter, these are arbitrarily drawn, as I said before, as long as you're consistent with your signs in your Cartesian system, then you should be fine and get the same answers. So by Newton's third law, the reaction force is actually going in the opposite direction of the two force member, and the same goes for right here, which is actually going here. So this is gonna be R. And then uh, for this component, this is actually gonna be a pin. So I'm gonna draw the pin in this direction. You can draw it in any other direction that you prefer, but I'm going to draw it like this. So that's AX, AY, and then there's going to be a normal force going in this direction, which is what we're looking for. And then by Newton's third law, there's going to be a normal force going in that direction. And then this body A can actually slide along this uh, slot right here. So it's basically a smooth contact force. So we could say this is going to be an A, and this is going to be and A on this diagram. So once we have that, uh, we could draw the pin on this uh, diagram. So that's going to be in the opposite directions of these forces. So it'll be AY and then AX. And I believe that's every force for this free body diagram. So we, if we actually added up all these internal forces, such as N and NA and then AX, Y and R's, we should just get the this diagram, which is just the force being applied at the handles. So if we do all this, so we add up all these free body diagrams, we should get something that looks like this. And that's how you know that you drew your internal forces correctly, or your reaction forces correctly. So before we get started, we're actually going to do some geometry, uh, because we need this angle at which R points to solve this problem. So what we're going to do is actually define a triangle in this diagram. So what this triangle is going to be is going to be from here, from here, to from B to D. So let me try to draw this correctly. To D, and then it's going along the two force member, which is BD. And then the, we got to include this other right triangle because there's a small offset of 6.25 millimeters and this is 15 millimeters. So our goal is actually to find this angle theta so we know which direction this reaction force right here, R, is being applied at this free body diagram. So uh, let's, I'm going to redraw this triangle so we can analyze it further. So here we go. So I redrew the diagram, made it a little bit bigger so we could see what we're doing, and our goal is to find this angle theta. So if we're given this angle theta, um, we can actually find this angle at which R acts upon. So using this big triangle, I guess we could ignore this uh, this length right here. I thought it would be important, but I guess not. So this is, our, well, real quick, we're going to define our points. So this is going to be B, this is going to be B, and this is going to be D. And that's just basically the per uh, the, ho the vertical distance from B to D and the horizontal distance from D to B. So what we're going to do is define a theta and theta is going to equal um, the tan inverse the tan inverse of 
21.25, and 21.25 is basically adding 15 plus 6.25 over 46.5, and what that gives us is 24.560 degrees. So now that we know that angle, we can actually analyze two parts of this diagram and we can solve the problem succinctly in that fashion. So we're gonna look at this free body diagram and we're gonna look at this free body diagram. But first we're gonna look at this and apply the concept of moments to solve for R. R uh, yeah, R, and then we can solve the rest of the diagram. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at that at that at that free body diagram so it's going to look something like this so that is our free body diagram of this part of the machine so what we're going to do is actually apply the concept of moments to this uh this point a so what we're going to do uh, is define our moments, and this is going to be uh, x, and this is going to be y, and then this is going to be the positive orientation for this diagram. So the moment about a, so we take the moment about a, which is going in that direction, we could say that p, or no, we're going to start off with the uh, vector r, so we're going to say that this is negative r sine of 90 minus theta. So 90 minus theta is basically this force right here. So that's R um, X. So this is R X. And then R, so the perpendicular distance from R X to A as shown in this diagram. So R X to A, so that's gonna be somewhere around here to A, that's gonna be 15 millimeters as shown right here. So that's gonna be 15 millimeters. So that's going to be 15 millimeters. And then what we're going to do is subtract our cosine of 90 minus theta. So what that's going to be is actually this vector right here. So that's Ry. And the perpendicular distance from Ry to A, as shown in this diagram, Ry to A. So that's going to be this direction to here. That is 58 millimeters. So 58 millimeters. And then lastly, all we have is this force vector P. So we have negative P times the perpendicular distance from P to A. So P is actually just pointing vertically downward. So it'll be 58 plus 46.5 millimeters. So what that is actually is gonna be this. So 58 plus 46.5 millimeters and this whole equation right here adds, uh, adds up to zero because we are in equilibrium. So what I'm going to do is um, um, move this over to the other side, this, these R uh, variables on, onto the other side of the equation and factor R and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. So R times 15 cosine theta plus 58 sine theta equals negative 104.5 5 p. So I just moved this equation around a bit and now we're going to solve for r. So r is actually going to be, uh, we do 15 cosine theta plus 58 sine theta and then the numerator will be negative 104.5. So after plugging in some numbers, this is what I'm going to get for r. So R equals negative 193.773 newtons. So the reason why it's negative just means that I drew R in the wrong orientation when I drew my free body diagram. So R actually points in this direction, but I'm gonna keep it as that and solve the rest of the problem before I change any force directions. So the next part we're actually gonna um, do is actually take the sum of the forces in the x direction of this diagram. So we could say, let me change color, um, maybe dark purple. So the sum of the forces in the x direction of this diagram, that's gonna be ax um, plus 
rx, so rx is actually r sine of 90 minus theta, and that's going to equal zero. So what we can do here, is say ax equals negative r sine of 90 minus theta, which is gonna be the same as negative r cosine of theta. So we can say ax equals negative, negative 193.773, cosine of 24.560 and then from there we could actually solve for ax so ax equals 176.242 newtons and this is positive so I actually drew this reaction force at the pivot a in the correct direction so now we can use this this uh, reaction force at ax for this free body diagram of this part. So we know AX and our goal is to find this re, uh, this compress, compressive force N. Um, that's our goal so we can use this free body diagram now. So let's draw that free body diagram. So this is our free body diagram. So what we can do is take the sum of the forces in the x direction. So we're gonna define this way as uh, x. So what we can do is take the sum of the forces in the x direction and our goal is to find this value n. So we can simply say negative n minus ax equals zero because we are in equilibrium. And we plug in the value for ax. So we could say that um, n is equal to negative ax so n equals negative 176.242 newtons. So what that's saying is actually the normal force being applied on this, on this uh, diagram is incorrect. It's pointing in the opposite direction. It should be pointing in that direction, which actually makes sense. Because uh, if we're applying a, on a force onto this diagram and squeezing this uh, eyelet, it should actually be pointing in that direction. If we're squeezing this eyelet, and then uh, the reaction force on this, uh, on this uh, point right here is actually pointing in this direction. So I just drew in arbitrary fashion, and then although I was incorrect in my directions, um, the signs or the math actually uh, told me which direction it should be pointing. So the compressive force actually points in uh, this direction. So what we can do is, uh, we are, well, we are, actually, we are actually done with this problem. So the reaction force or the compressive force is simply 176.242 newtons when, when applying uh, 70 newton force onto the handles like this. So a quick recap of what we did, we exploded this machine into various parts and applied Newton's third law when drawing the forces on each part. And then we did a little bit of some geometry uh, for to find this angle theta to uh, to define which way the vector r is pointing so we could solve for this free body diagram which is shown here and then we apply the moments at a which allows us to get rid of these two unknown variables a y and a x so that we can solve for r and we know the value for p so we that's what we did right here and we found the value of r and then what we did uh, uh, for the same free body diagram is sum the forces in the x direction. So as we sum the forces in the x direction, this is what we get. And we solve for the uh, reaction force at pin A in the x direction, and this is what we get. And then we apply the same concept of, uh, of looking at the free body diagram of this portion of the machine and solve for the um, normal force, which is what we're looking for, by using the sum of the equations, or some of the forces in the x direction equaling zero. And this is what we get for the compressive force, which is 176.242 newtons.